Okay, it really gives me great pleasure to welcome Evelyn in our midst to this virtual webinar on ways to help interviewers see your value. And Evelyn joins us with really, you know, extensive work background and it's very much related to our topic today. She is an ICF certified coach with more than 20 years of work experience. She doesn't look it. <laughs> Across HR consulting and also organizational development, sales and career coaching. I know her personally and she is a great person to connect with. Uh, she has a passion for making a difference to organizations that she is a part of. I've seen her work ethic it's really admirable. Evelyn believes in enabling organization successes through harnessing its human capital and effective business partnering. You have no idea. You really have to work with her to see how she is in touch with every single person that she interacts with. She is certified in several psychometric tools. She, put, she has the knowledge and experiences in talent management and development to bring about effective human capital practices and strategies. In fact, her, her experience is so extensive and so varied. It's a question, you know, it's nice to be in her position to, to have the freedom to choose, okay, mm, this, at this, phase, at this phase of my career, this is what I'm going to be focusing on. She has also career coached and developed more than 200 professionals in their career journey and enabled valuable insights as a coach you know i really stress so much on that part because some of you may have met her i don't know if you have then you are really really fortunate so today she's gonna go deep and tell us about how you can illuminate your visibility during your job search Woo! welcome evelyn somehow our paths do cross actually yes. and you'll be so surprised that actually i think i know her for about what, more than 10 years more than 15 10 years. years probably yes yeah 15 years way 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 back so well this I must say, thank first. you so much <laughs> yeah thank you so much Eileen, for the invite um yeah i think maybe uh, some of you could be my previous client before uh maybe you know because my last role i was in wsg as a career coach so i may have also you know um talked to some of you before in the past Okay, so that background, I think Elaine has covered it really well. Now, you may think that, okay, um, in this area, it sounds like Elaine, you have actually covered that wide area that seems related to each other. But in reality, my career journey isn't that easy as you think. It isn't. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you today, because whether you are in any part of your job search, you need to actually make yourself visible. Now, we all talk about being visible in the hiring process by highlighting the way how you fit the job, but actually how you fit the job already starts even while you are not looking out, frankly. And I will tell you why. Now, I can summarize, this is actually my career journey. And it's really transitioned. Now, long, long way ago, I started with HR operation role when I was a lot, a lot younger than now, frankly. <laughs> um, before I earned my first degree, I was in HR ops uh, for about three years. After I earned my degree, well, being a fresh grad, I look at it and say, okay, I'd like to be in marketing and sales so that I understand business. So I was in technology uh um, technology mncs for about four and a half years um then opportunity came i was much younger then still opportunity came and i was given a chance to move into hr product sales yeah hr product sales and within hr product sales i had opportunity within the 10 and a half years i moved from hr product to consulting consulting sales within consulting as well across a couple of um, big MNCs consulting companies. Now, um, and then by then I would have about, what, 17, 18 years of work experiences. And as many of you would have experienced after you work about 10, 15, maybe 18 years before 20 years, you start to think, where am I right now? Why am I where I am? 
and you could be some you 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 could have grown um because of some experience you may start to rethink about you know i want to rethink about my career experiences now all these are quite natural we all think about it at some point of our life so i'm i'm no different as well and i at then i wanted to make my first move into corporate hr yeah now so that's my first transition into corporate hr and into the corporate hr it isn't come it, it didn't come easy because before that i have no hr real hr corporate hr experiences but I was able to make the first transition. Okay, so I make the first transition. Um, about one and a half years later, the SME is not doing quite well, and so then I dis- I then I were then forced to take a career break. So it was a forced career break then, uh, and I look up and I said that where am I heading next? Now opportunity came, then I had a chance, and the opportunity didn't just come like that for me to move into career coaching. I had to bend my back to contract work, actually, and small contract work until the real opportunity for career coaching came about, and that's where I moved into career coaching. For after a three and a half year career coaching. Then came the opportunity, and as of then, I was thinking about moving back into corporate uh, HR life, corporate roles. And there, I came into this opportunity in a com- current company with a fintech company as an internal coach. Still, it is not HR, it was internal coach, and I took it up. So I took up the internal coach role. After about one year, opportunity came, and then I was able to move into the HR role in an OD function. And for some of you who may not be aware what OD is, is organization development function. It is actually a center of excellence as part of HR. So this is where I'm right now. Now here you are. I'm just going through a little bit of history to help you to just see how I have actually moved on. Um, in between. I put in, you know, what I have done in terms of uh, upscaling, with certifications, accreditations, and all that to keep myself up to date so that I expand my capabilities. Yeah. Now, um, I, I just need to say that right now, if you put in anything, Eileen, if they put, if anybody put in any question, I won't be able to say it because of the way how I am just presenting uh, my slides. Yeah. That's I'm, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Okay. Got great, it. Great. So, so really, I must say, I had three major transitions. The first transitions is after my 15 years of product sales consulting. How do I move into corporate HR? That's the first one. The second is having to move into career coaching, and I must say that I had wanting to move into career coaching because of two reasons. First, I have a personal calling into career coaching at them. Secondly, I was observing how, because of the way how um, um, Singapore is with our economy, uh, there is a huge need for career coaching that comes along together with my calling, which is why I, at the point of time, I thought that career coaching would be that path that I wanted to take. So I write on it. Now, my third transition is really transiting back into strategic HR. So you see, I'm no different. I have three major transitions, and everyone may think that it's along the same area, but actually, it's not quite not, because in every transition, the employer that is looking at me fulfilling the role, they are looking at. How could I be successful in that role without that experiences behind? Now, I want to point this out because it is just so essential for any one of us to think about if I am going to apply for a job. Any one of us, and when you're applying for a job, at the same time, there are tens. There are thousands, probably not thousands, but hundreds of people are going for the same job as well. It is the truth. It is the fact. It is the reality. You will not be the only candidate going for the role. Now, if you had an internal referral, 
and you had good networks and people knows you for who you are, I must say that's a very, very big advantage. But not many of us, when we want to go for a role, we have the internal referrals. Are we going to cry over not having internal referrals? We are not. We can't do anything if we can no internal referrals. We can try our best to see if we have internal referrals, but if not, it's beyond our control. So in any hiring, you have very commonly a lot of stages. Now, here I am. I am just talking about typically what's an organization typical hire process. Uh, at a point, and you see it's a funnel. It's a funnel that goes all the way down. Right? So it means that in each process, you have a lot of people that will be screened out. Uh, and the screening out, you can uh, I see some of the questions before and say, well, I've got good feedback. Um, interviewer seems quite positive. Uh, and but HR say I am not suitable. Why? Well, many, many reasons. If you look at this, it's meant to be in this way. That means only if there's only one position, one role offered, that means only one person out of the 200 people who applied for it will actually get the job. But whether that one person is going to be you depends on many, 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 many factors. Some factors are within your control. Some factors are not within your control. So if someone else had an internal referrals, that's not within your control. Yeah. So. The better you are at having internal referrals and knowing what value you bring and be able to vocalize the value that you bring to the table and the ability to actually govern through all these different platforms, selection platforms, the higher chance you actually get into the offered stage. Now, pre-screening, some organizations have this, some organizations do not. But it is very common nowadays that organizations go through some form of screening. If you are on a technical job, it means that a lot of the technical roles, they are not ready to train. If you look at the job description, look at whether are they looking at some clear technical skills or functional skills that the role is looking for. And if you don't have them, the chances that you get screened in to go to the interview stage is actually going to be very low. Now, we have to be practical, we have to be realistic because you can be applying for 1000 jobs, but if you were applying for the wrong jobs, you realize you will not hit actually what you're looking for. You will not even get into the interview rounds because put yourself in the shoe. And I believe that many of you probably has been a hiring manager before Think about it when you are hiring manager, what do you look up? Now think about it. Are you willing to train? Now, unless the job is a fresh grad job, a job that probably, you know, only requires two, three years of experience, then they could probably are willing to train someone else. But if they are not, you may be working on factors against yourself. So you may apply and the quantity does not equate to quality. And I always gave this advice to job seekers. I said that I protect your confidence. What confidence will you have if you apply for 1000 jobs that doesn't fit you at all, that you don't, that you're not able to speak about your fit, that you don't get any interviews at all? What changes that your confidence will still be there at the end of three months? So the thing is, you need to protect your own confidence. Yeah. So in the pre-screening stage, it is very common when you go to your interview stage, the interview stage, depending on the company, it could be one round, depending on the roles that you go for, it could be one round, it could be two rounds. And the more senior you go, the more rounds you have, the scope of people that will meet you will actually going to be a lot wider. If you go up to the regional level, you will actually get to meet people from global, from regional. You will meet your peers, you will meet the subordinates, you will meet not just your boss, bosses, you will meet your boss and the peers. So you must be ready and say that, okay, 
with these different stakeholders and and you know Eileen talks about stakeholders so the, the different stakeholders they all come with a key objective which is to assess whether you're fit for the job different stakeholders see different things mm. your team members if you are managing a team hmm, how would it be like if you are the manager can you be our team lead can you be our manager if your peers are looking at you they're going to look at yeah i know what's the challenges in this job are you able to fulfill this job are you able to help us and your partner with us okay i will be my my team members is going to work with him is there a fit if you talk to someone else from the global they will say how do you fit to the overall culture hr is going to say how do you bring what kind of values do you bring to the culture if you are senior at a certain level so you see different hats play different role and the men to see you to all be able to diverge at the end of the day to say i hire him or her so for you is that it is important in your hiring process as you go through it to really go prepared prepared not just for the sake of just talking about who you are but be prepared to talk about how you can be successful in that role so that as what elin says it thing is believing now it is then your job as a candidate to say how do i verbalize so that at the end of the day they could see from how i verbalized how i can do the job mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. now i showed that also there are further assessment in some roles there are even further assessment but some organization know it could be final interview and you get into the next level right away which is going to be salary negotiation if you have done well for the entire interview process when um and then you were they were talking about uh negotiating salaries and all that and then you think about it where the salaries concerned are not quite what you're looking at now this is something that you need to ask yourself do i need the job really 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 badly okay how long have i been out of and whether do i am i or can i let go of this opportunity because i want to stick into my salary and then i forgo this chance and wait for the next one now and there is no perfect answer for this it really depends on situation i've got people who said this is not quite what i'm looking at but i'm just going to write on it and just take it if you miss this then in the next 3 months you don't get any you're going to beat yourself really hard <laughs> okay so there's no direct answer to this but it really depends how much of a need do you need this job and you really need this job that you cannot afford to actually give this a miss very true evelyn i think edman uh, also mentioned that he agrees with you he's got a question and he's he asks how to get internal referral when you haven't actually joined the company and his question mm-hmm. is are you talking about networking and then you know networking with someone in that company and have that someone who you know thinks well of you and maybe do a recommendation is that what you're talking about okay i'm going to hold this question at mm. thanks a lot and thanks elim for bringing i'm going to hold this question because i'm going to talk about it later on ah nice yeah? nice yeah i'm going to talk about this yeah okay so i'm moving to the next slide okay so when you're in the process yeah so here am i i'm talking about you are already in the process they caught you by talking about you already got through and you had your first interview so i put in the key points here and the first being clarity with where your career direction is heading and why now all of us is very common you have the question and say tell me about yourself is equivalent to why are you applying for this role now it is very common i have job seekers who say it, even though they have 20 years of experience they say oh i graduate with a degree da 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 and then they start from day one not forgetting everyone's attention span is very short yeah and you could be the 10th candidate that they meeting by the time they come to you they probably heard a lot of stories so you need to catch the eye they need to say my last 5 years of experience and how it fits the role where you're heading 
I'm applying for this job because of this. Now, this is important because it means that the first three minutes you capture their attention. Now, how many times you've gone through an event like today, if I didn't catch your attention, if Eileen and I didn't catch your attention for the first five, 10 minutes, how true are you going to stay with us? Likely not, yeah? In the same way, when you go for interview, nobody's going to hear your life because they have heard many. And life stories may not mean anything. It means a lot to us, but it's not to them. What they wanted to hear is how you fit the role. Yeah? yeah. Right? All the roles that we're going for, they're non-for-profit organizations. Even, non, even for-profit organizations, they want to see how you fit the role, yeah? Very because... True. The risk, the cost of hiring someone else who does not do the job well, the company cost is really very, very high. Now, I'm not going to cost, but clearly many organizations, if you have been a hiring manager, you will know. Just imagine you have someone else in the job. In the first two months, you see the person can't do the job. You will say, oh gosh, I need to go to the hiring board again. I need to rehire. I need to even think about how I should tell the person that the person is not fitting for the job. And by the time the person leaves, you lost three months of work time. And think about how this person is actually needing to meet the objectives of the team, KPI of the division as well. Yeah, You need to make them feel that they have very low risk, very high success rates of hiring you. So knowing that clarity is important, knowing how you fit into the role. So I must say the job description that you have, be very clear, dissect the job, and know where are the areas that you can really do well, where are the areas where you have prior experiences, your real experiences, and then think about how you want to position your why through your storytelling into the interview. Now, I must say in many of my career transition, when I prepare for the interview, I actually prepare a proposal of how I do the job and how I can help them to be successful in overcoming the challenges. Mm. <clears throat> yeah? I must say, in some of them, I went to do a lot of background checks. I went to do a lot of research. And the research, some research information were actually online. So I researched about the company. I learned about the company portfolio, the products, the challenges. I read up the annual reports. I go to LinkedIn and I find out about the people who will be interviewing me. And I find out and I go in and look at what they talk about in the LinkedIn posts. I look at the people that they work with, information is all available on social media, on team. And these help to piece information to build my storytelling during interview. I wrap that up together really with the job. And I tell myself, I say that I'm going into a job that has got a lot of challenges. And I put on a cap to say, how am I going to make them feel that I will help them resolve all these challenges because they hire me. I want to make them feel that I'm a good hire and I should be the only hire. This is the mindset I have and this is how I prepare for all my interviews. Yeah, So I help them imagine how I could be successful in the role. I must say in every role that I go for, I prepare really a good proposal of how I'm doing the job, how I am doing the roles. Now, the last point is about practice, practice and practice. So there is, you can't imagine on your head only. It is important that you actually write it out. It is important that you paint it out in your own ways. It is important that you speak in front of the mirror. If you have no one else to practice with, if you need someone else to practice with, I would suggest you get a career coach because a career coach that WSG is actually um, providing, you will actually really, really help you to give you a platform for practicing. Sometimes you may not be um, clear or you may, uh, all, all of us, we have blind spots, huh? none of us, we are perfect. We may have a blind spot and we didn't realize that the way how we speak may not come across as convincing. 
So the career coaching really, really helps. So I would say practice, practice and practice, and these will help you to also beef up your confidence. Now, any question at this point? Yeah, I, I think the similar question that we got earlier on also related to the internal referrals was, mm. was uh, Yvonne asked, will internal candidates or referees have brownie points over external uh, candidates during the selection? Okay, okay. Now, the truth of the matter is every every role that we go for is high chance we will meet internal referrals. Okay, now all of us, some of us in the HR role, we know when we actually um, advertise for a role, we already have the hiring manager may have some candidates in mind already. Mm. Yeah, because people want to hire people that they know that will be successful in the job. Yeah, especially the higher stakes the roles are, the more responsibility, accountability the role are. You can't afford someone else to fail and try on the job. Yeah, so there will be, and I must say, those are the ones who will play against you, any one of us. But frankly, we have no control. Mm, yeah. And I'm going to worry, then I will never step out. I will never get the chance to actually apply for any role. Frankly, is it is it within our control? No. Now, if you know that there's going to be internal referrals, can you do anything to stop it? Mm. No one else, yeah? You and I, no one else can stop it, you know? Right? So we can only try our best. And through, through the interview, sometimes we get to practice a bit more. So some of our interviews could be sessions for us to practice, right? So after your interviews, it's important to always retrospect it and just think back and say, hmm, I have this question and then I answer it this way. Did I, did I answer it right? How could it, could I, how could I polish how I answer it? So the, the reflections is very important for you. Very now, true. When it comes to the inter referrals we can't do anything about it so i say don't worry about it i never <laughs> let myself in obviously i never let myself be worried about internal referrals if you know how organization function yeah you know where the hiring manager is coming from and having to think about what others can do in expand their circle and not my circle yeah i'm gonna feel more anxious i'm gonna lose my sleep over it and we all know once I lose my sleep over it, once I get stressful, my cortisol level goes up, I can't be myself. That's very true. Yeah. Anyway, you've got a compliment. Uh, jo Josephine said, thank you. Very insightful. And uh, Farida asked a question. Is the final decision made by the hiring manager or HR? Okay. I would say it depends on the organization culture. In some organization, HR has a very big say. Mm. Okay. Because the fit is not there. Yeah, uh, for many reasons, you could be not selected, even though you fit, it could be budget, it could be to the very end, suddenly there's an odd change, the role went away. Not within your control, frankly. Mm. You have been the best candidate, but the were odd change, an organization change just pop, it just comes, frankly, and the role just went away. How many times that happened to me? A couple of times, <laughs> right? So are we going to be sad? Are we going to be anxious? Are we going to none of these emotions is going to help us frankly it will only make us feel a lot more dejected mm. now having to maintain like i said uh, protecting your own confidence and your energy level is so important in job search because job search is not going to be easy especially when you're doing a career change Very not true. not going to be easy so you need to keep the energy on yeah so you must protect yourself you must revitalize yourself you must recharge Okay. I love that. This is real stuff. <laughs> this is real stuff because, you know, I mean, your, your, your coach may help you, your friend may be a shoulder to cry on, but if you are continue in your own space of crying over things that you can't control, no one else is going to help you, seriously. Yeah? Okay, I'm going to move on. So now I talk about the selection process, the hiring process they're in, yeah? And now I'm going to talk about three real things that some a lot of your questions. Ageism. I am above <laughs> this age. Can I? Uh, I have career breaks. What should I do? Well, career breaks because some things happen. Oh, I mean, a lot of us, we all play a lot of roles in our life. 
sometimes in our role we have to give careers because there's a family need because we have health issues because the things takes precedent our life is not just evolved around a career right so these things happen or i decided like me i decided i should do a career switch what should i do right now what are the challenges that how do you make sure now these things happen so how do you minimize this stuff how do you minimize you can't do anything about your age yeah you'd be surprised you didn't know how old i am but i'm not going to review you here <laughs> <laughs> so we can't do anything about our age really okay now i must be very 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 upfront i said i was in career coaching i have got people who is above 50 and they still can find a job and all this. I have got people at the age of 25 and 30 and they feel that they're trapped they couldn't find a job yeah so ageism happens to everyone it's about at the end of the day is how you see how you then play with your strength your advantage the areas that you know the role will find you a good fit the company will find your advantage yeah now career breaks career breaks happens and career breaks frankly one month two months in between jobs one month two months three months it is very common if we are career breaks for one six months and above my suggestion is that you take up part time jobs or you take up um learnings certifications uh um learnings so that you feel the time that you are searching and you position as career break mm. it is important because if i were if someone else would ask you and say what have you been doing for a year oh nothing watching tv every day and then go marketing every day and then i go for my tour breaks now these are fine this is our life mm. but if you are hiring manager and your role states you need someone else who's able to do this 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 is this you think about oh this person has been a relaxed life for one year what are the chances that this person even though has got relevant background that the person is actually able to come back to the same speed that we are requesting this role to be in mm. yeah now i'm not being judgmental but you just think about what goes behind their mind so it may be true well when i have my career breaks i also take life a little bit more easier Mm. is how you position it you want to position on how you be making use of your career breaks now if you had to make a career break because you were taking care of a family member it is then important for you to show that the family member is perfectly all right now because mm. you don't want to have a question to say oh okay with a family member still need your time mm. then very true okay now career switch is a big thing i'm going to talk about it later Okay, so growing your marketability, this is actually talking about ageism. This is actually talking about your career switch. How do you grow your marketability? How do we do that so that because when we are been selected for interviews, here we are talking that we don't even have the chance. How we do we grow to make sure that we are marketable? Well, Um I'm going to summarize in this three build your personal branding and network. It comes a lot with them. Network. Now network it's about your past work and um work colleagues in the past, people that used to work well with you. Now many of you um maybe on LinkedIn, maybe not. I would say LinkedIn is a great place for you to build your personal branding, not your Facebook, not your Instagram yet. It's really your LinkedIn. And this is important because LinkedIn is and 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 the bigger network that you build, and I've seen as well people who's on LinkedIn network build their network because and they start to build. Okay, what do we all want to be known of? Yeah, I'm in marketing, and then besides marketing, I'm in retail. I want to make sure that I go into um, FMB, uh, not just retail, but FMB and hospitality that seems to be adjacent industries. How do I build that? So you want to build your personal branding in that way and your network, and in time is to stop that open and link my story. See, really, what happened is 
whatever road I move in, I took up accreditation, I could up certification. So it is important for you to build along the way. And the last important point is to practice self-care. Mm. You need to practice compassionate for yourself, mindfulness, because it is a long journey and don't beat yourself too much in the journey. Because if you beat yourself too much, you will not have much energy to actually position yourself during the interview. Now, here I am showing navigating transition. If you have row one and row two, that's totally non-transferable skills. Versus a row three that you have transferable skills, you will see that your chances of getting into row three is a lot more easier. Yeah. So for example, if I am so recognizing where are your transferable skills into the area. So you're planning for a career stage, you're sick of your current role, think about mm -hmm. where are the other roles that you can actually have good transferable skills into. For example, um, let's say you are in marketing. Yeah, and marketing is a big umbrella, right? So you are in branding and you decided that maybe I don't want to do branding anymore. I want to do something else. That's still transferable within the big umbrella of marketing, but a different area. Yeah, but if you say I'm in marketing, I want to go into IT technology. I wanted to be in, well, you know, um, I think business analyst is a big thing. Yeah, developers is a big thing, but it's total different roles. And the likelihood of you to spend another time to get a degree is going to be very low. It's totally non-transferable at all. The chance of you moving from one into another where you don't see any gap left at all is actually going to be very low. Now, for my transition, I ended up, I identified this. In my product and consulting sales, I could move into coaching and development. And that's where I leap into strategic HR. And for each of the leap, I kind of rec I kind of recognize where are my strength and how I can position them. The opportunity that came about a contract work at some times. I just took it up. The roles that I got in strategic HR in my current role, it didn't come through immediately. It came through as an internal coach role, something I can leech upon with my coaching and development background. Then I do that role well. And I expand a lot of my networks within the organization and I proactively work above what my current role is. That's why I could get into a different, into a strategic OD role in my current capacity. And that's how I move. Yeah. Now building your value. One question is we all know of is a lot of times that you know of, we try to go deep into one area as an expert in building your value deep down into one area. Some of us go in a generalist. So I am white across jack of all trades, but I am not actually expert in any area. Now, a better way to look at this is probably a T-shape. So you want to look at building in building your capabilities to increase your marketability is to constant reflect on your current career journey and say, okay, I may have developed certain T and on my way to develop certain T shape. How do I develop the T shape? So work experiences is one as I get into one, I should increase with my certification and learning. And I should probably in my current role, find chance to actually get more projects. <laughs> if I do my BAU job, my business as usual job, that's what my job description is, I will end up with just simply what any other people in that role will be doing. Now I'm going to adopt a proactive approach and say, I'm going down in depth. I'm going to do a lot more. I'm going to look up for suggestion. I'm going to look up for opportunities to do a lot more. So I could then position in my resume that I've done this and these experiences at the same time, I built the experiences and I built the knowledge. Now with this T shape, you start to realize that um, I could also look across the broad context and knowledge and spectrum is often functional. So for example, if you are in finance, nowadays we don't just talk about finance as just your finance expertise. We talk about how could we be a partner with the business in translating the you know finance numbers into what it means for the business in translating what it means if you have increased 
um, let's say your uh, profit margins by 1%, what does it mean for our businesses? So at the end of the day, it's about making the business come alive with in fact, what does this mean in terms of the numbers? Again, in expanding your value, I personally advocate not just a T, but actually a V. So when I say a V is in fact, not just growing deep in one area, but I continue to build the depth in a few areas. Not, I still have a one main deep area, but I have several deep areas within the other domains with a broad context knowledge across the organization. So your business knowledge, your industry knowledge, what does it mean in this area for the same industry? What does it mean? Now, all this is going to be really important because not forgetting that when you're expanding your knowledge, your capabilities, your experiences, you are at the same time building your own, I call it base for future movements. Now, um, surely this is something that you have to start from somewhere, right? Um, I think many of you may be thinking, Evelyn, I probably don't have this yet. How do I build from here? We are never too late. I didn't build on this in the very early stage. I built on this on my 40s onwards. Yeah. And when you build on this, you realize that you build as you go and learning how to vocalize what you have built and the capabilities that you built that come along, that you bring along to every interview is about turning those into what they are looking at for the job. So again, building this, you need a platform to also vocalize, which is LinkedIn. I say that's the best thing. Vocalize your value. And that would not matter if you are 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, because you have built that. No one else will see that. If they see your value, your age only comes with the experience. Frankly, just think about in some jobs, we need people with a lot more experience. So is the ageism what we are thinking? Or if we overcome this by thinking, I will show my value, no one else is going to talk about your age. Yeah. Okay. It will still grow behind their mind, but really this is not going to stop them from seeing your value. So your value matters. How you build your values, how you show your values and demonstrate it is just going to be, and you need a platform. So here I'm advocating LinkedIn. I am not a representative of LinkedIn, surely, but it's based on experiences <laughs> because I must say for each of the hires, they go into LinkedIn and they check out who you are. Now, I must say, um, throughout the two, the last one and a half years, every now and then, I do have roles that pop up to me and say, mm. Evelyn, we have this opportunity, are you keen? Now, did I go and look up? No, I didn't. But mm -hmm. I have been constantly been active on LinkedIn and involving my network, as well as building that network as well on LinkedIn. And then whatever that's been post on LinkedIn that you have done, your activity, it is there in your profile. So it doesn't go away. Yeah. At the same time, collect your um, compliments to LinkedIn as well, your recommendations. Mm -hmm. That's going to stay with you. So that's how you build your value throughout and you want to demonstrate your value. And when you then have the interview opportunity, it really just gives you the chance, the platform for you to show how you fit the job. Yeah. Okay. Now, <laughs> uh, I'm going to repeat this again. Yeah. I think it's a nice um, summary. <laughs> yeah, it is. I must say, um, the job search is not easy. It is very often, if you think back, how many times have you overcome a big, big challenge in your career? Yeah, and it's meant to challenge you at the same time as it challenge you, you can actually grow and you need a lot of your self care in that journey. And what in whatever journey that you're in, it's really about your perspective. You think it's ageism, it will be ageism for you. 
you think it is others who do not see you in that way, you will play out in your interviews because you don't have the confidence. If you think that you are in abundance, it is about meeting the right role, then you know when each of the door close, you know it is about timing and finding the right role. At the end of the day, it is the mindset. Because there are a lot, a lot of factors that is playing against us and then we have no control. And so your mindset is going to be critical. Other things you can do within your control, your practice, you're looking at that, um, building your value. Um, but other things that's with, not within your control, I say don't worry about it. <laughs> Very true. It only makes us miserable. <laughs> and life don't want to be miserable. And Evelyn, I think you're advocating seven habits. <laughs> Focus on what you can control and not what you cannot control. <laughs> I'm advocating seven habits, yes. I'm advocating learn mindset, agility. I'm also advocating really a lot of stuff that we should focus on, you know, as what also Eileen, um, I mean, I, I came in, I heard about Eileen talking about learning mindset. Uh, whether you're 30, whether you're 40, whether you're 50, you know, it's learning, it's lifelong learning because the world is changing and we hear about AI and all that, the world is really changing. And if we don't add value to ourselves and build and keep building our value, it's not just you and me, anyone can be obsoleted, really. Yeah, yeah? that's very and true. I won't look, I won't, I won't get worried about how the roles will be obsoleted. I just focus on building my capabilities and, you know, I call it my knowledge, my capabilities and my base. And this is what I do. So then I don't have to worry about and, and then be able to position myself in all the roles that I go in. I do my very best. I don't do the BAU. Mm. I do above the BAU. And people will recognize. And that's where you get internal referrals. Frankly, you wouldn't want to re internal refer someone else who does not have the positivity. You don't want to refer someone else who seems negative at all time, which is why our attitude at work, our ethics, our attitude, our behaviors are so important because that's what others see us. Others view us for the behaviors that we portray, but they don't see our intentions. That's so true. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, Evelyn, if you're able to stop share, then uh yes, yeah, very nice. Share. So we've got we've got quite a few questions though. Woohoo! <laughs> I think uh, they are really keen to to hear your your views as well. Okay, let me see. Um, one of the popular question that was asked is, how do I articulate my values in order to command the salary that I am expecting? Just a just a maybe a brief answer. I know you've said quite a lot already. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Okay, so. I can't tell you the how, I can only tell the what. Oh, okay. Because the how is when someone else sit down with you and hear you speak mm. in reference to the job that you're going for, frankly. Right? So I can't tell you the how, because really that's it. It's the what's that I'm going to tell you. Okay. Right? Now, firstly, we don't know the budget. We have to recognize every company comes to the budget. If I am asking for a budget that's above what the company is, no matter how good I am in showing my value, I'm just not going to have the role. If someone else is as equivalent as me, yeah, yeah, I they will have competing candidates, yeah? Yeah. So candidate A is about the same as candidate B. Candidate B is asking for a lower value, be able to join faster, they get it. Yeah. Well, you did your job. You have done well, right? So, so we must be able to really know at what some point what are our priorities that's why i came back to the point as in how willing are you to say no to this forgo this and not having to beat yourself up for the next one mm. before the next one comes mm. that's important okay? very very nice so so that's very realistic that's very real and if you're talking about how do i do it it is important look at like i said look at the role what are the capabilities that they say this role must do this Mm. Okay, this role must deliver this non-negotiable, non preferably have this experience. Then you know the preferable one is nice to have. If you have nice to have, that's good. The must-have one 
it is important to show how in the past you have done this before. For example, this role requires to be able to touch, be able to expand on three new markets, India, Japan, and Japan. Yeah? For example, then you want to talk about position, how you have, if you have experience with these three markets, talk about your successes in expanding these three markets or penetrate greenfield experience into the three market. If you don't have, you have other markets, you can talk about, in not the best case, but at least you can talk about, I have expanded in China market before, China is close to Taiwan as comparable. I have expanded into Korea, not comparable to Japan, but you could see it's a different culture. Yeah. So you can talk about some of those ones, but you can't control the other candidates. So let's not worry about the other candidates. You will then position whatever that is in your advantage. Okay. So that's talk a... about long stories, short stories. Oops. Okay. Um, there's a related question about that question, and which is Yvonne says there's a little worry if they if she accepts a lower salary because does it mean that it gets a bit harder to get back the higher salary that she previously had? Um, answer is yes and no. Mm. Okay. Yes, because it is true that the next room will look at your current role mm. and say, okay, with your current role. You did accept this, which is twenty percent lower. I come from where you are to go up again. This is yes, unless you are going for the same role. If you're going for a different role, yeah. If you're going for the different role and you know the markets is easier for you to say, I know there is because of inflation, because of this, and my previous role was a smaller role. This role is a bigger role. I have a bigger region. I have a bigger portfolio. So my last role would not be a good gauge. Mm, mm. I yeah? think this so is So you cool. need to know exactly, yeah. You need to roll. You need to. You need to know uh, very well what's the next role about and how is it compared. Okay, I saw a question about uh going for skills and certification and training. Oops, are, are you? Do you? How, how long do I, I have with? Okay, I need to go at four, so I probably take two more questions. Okay. Uh, okay. There is a question about how do I connect well with the interviewer? Yep. There is one here that talks about that. How do I build trust and rapport with the interviewer? Okay. So, you know, if you go in and I think I saw a comment somewhere else and say, I am just, just talking like expert here. Yeah. So if you talk about textbooks, just in very textbook style, I think it's going to be very tough. Right. Now you need to connect with them and people. Now, I'm now facing all of you whose camera is not on. Yeah. Um, I only see Elaine, uh, Elaine and, and just now none of your cameras is on, but it's about engaging with all of you. <laughs> right. So, so no worries. treat your interviews like a conversation. Now, everyone likes to work with people that they feel comfortable with. Yep. So if more you go into an interview and you show that you're a nice, you're the right person, wherever roles you are, people like to work with people who are people oriented, frankly. Okay. People like to work with people that they know could be a good team player. Yeah. Positive traits, positivity, team player, friendly, approachable. These are really, <laughs> I call it universal rules. No one else like to work with someone else who. Yes. No one else like to work with someone <laughs> She's else. She's acting it out. Yeah. Right. So yes. so really, you the more you feel make the person feel that hey I really could have this person in the team because I can really gel so well. How many times have you in the past as a hiring manager said hey I really want to hire this because because I can really really connect with this person so well. So it goes the same way people and people connect. So connect with people. If you have good interpersonal skills, you are a people person. Play with your strength. Yeah? I like that. If you, don't, yeah. if you don't have it, doesn't mean it's okay, but you can get a bit more friendlier, you know, smiling, and people just like it. I mean, so that's why it's so important. If you have a chance, go to face-to-face -to -face interview. Mm. 
okay? Don't wear your mask. The mask is going to mask your smiles. The mask is mm. going to mask mm. the way how you look and how genuine you look on your face. Mm. Yeah, really like that. Yeah? Yeah. And One last question. Ayo, ayo. So, so many. Uh, uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll pick this, right? How do I convince the interviewers to see that I am serious and committed in my mid-career change? So it gets very, very tough, right? Uh, and that I have a lot to offer. And connected to this question is actually someone who already attended some mid-career change courses but don't have the experience. That How can these two groups of individuals convince the interviewing panel that, hey, invest in me, please, give me a chance? Mm, okay, now... um. There's no correct, there's no clear, sure will win. I'm not giving you a sure win recipe. Mm. I will only say increase your chances with a few things. Number one, you want to tell yourself, because every one of us, we have got um, obligations, we have got financial uh, obligations and all that. Um, you want to give yourself a certain time that you say stop is stop. That's it, is that's it. Okay? This is a reality check you need to tell yourself based on my bank account, based on my financial uh, obligations. How long can I be in this journey? Yeah. Now, if you have calculated that out and you say, yes, I can, then you need to give probably num try a few things. Number one, don't go for the big jobs. Mm. Go for the small roles. Um, identify where are the key experiences that you need, you lack and go for the small companies that are looking for just those experts. Pro bono. Pro bono, is yeah. Another one. Mm. yeah? So, so I have people in the past who say, I want to go into, um, for a period of time, I want to go into, I want to go into marketing. Um, I want to go, uh, I want to go into become a developer. Yeah. So uh, what do they do? They take up coding classes. Then what do they do? But so they look out for, so I, I gave advice, go to pro bono look out for pro bono so that you can build up and be free and be ready to give free and take that as an experience go to non-for-profit organization they always look out for people who can do these things automate processes for them take this as a chance call up and then and say i'm willing to do this for you free of charge yeah very nice yeah because you need to chalk out what i call work samples yeah yeah exactly very i mean nice. you don't have the work samples you don't mm. have the work experiences yeah you, you you can't do anything about it no seriously you can only build it up yeah right you have networks that's the best your networks and and not that your networks can be there 100 percent because your networks also depends on the opportunity in your organization yeah they like you to know? recommend you but no exactly, opportunity exactly so so if you in the past you have not been of us in some way not being really very positive they may not have a good impression of you you can't you can't overcome some of those stuff mm. it all stays with us right so to the younger folks here the younger candidates the younger people here i say have a good start with your good ethics and attitude because it goes with you a long long way don't be worried about doing extra work because the extra work will come back to you one day don't be worried for mid careers to say I'm giving free work because it will help you one day. Yeah. Even if it means that I'm accepting at a lower price, it will actually come back to you one day. Because know what you're looking for? It's actually to have your work experiences. Very true. Oh gosh, wow. Evelyn, you got a lot of uh, words of appreciation in the chat from from you know uh, Yvonne, Cynthia, Farid, Gary, uh, Sabrine, you know there's a Samsung 99 <laughs> 908E whoever you are uh, yeah and uh, Ram Ram also yeah Sharina I'm just reading them off at Winner as well Tammy Tammy is saying uh, that she has to go but she's saying thank you as well yeah. wow Evelyn you have offered <laughs> way more than what you have committed to do Thank you so much, Vincent, you know, uh, Yi Ling. You know, all all of you, please connect with Evelyn. She is an amazing person. I call her because she's also pivotal in my own career change. So I know she really cares for people. You know, the world can do more with people like her. Oh, gosh. No, it's no, true. No, no. It's true. I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we still circle back. We still circle back, yeah. But... Yeah. um. 
thank you again for for bearing it all <laughs> sharing so much with us and thank you audience for all your questions so Evelyn I'll let you go two minutes past four yikes sorry thank you everyone thank thanks you. for all your time so if you will search me on LinkedIn just Evelyn K career coach you should be able to find me and send me an invite and say because you know we have a lot of spams huh? Uh, AI spams, uh, yeah. that's artificial. Yeah. So send me and say, Evelyn, I attended a session today. Um, can we stay connected? Well, if you send me, and of course, as long as you are not spam, I will <laughs> I will accept you. <laughs> you get a all lot right, more words of appreciation. All the best for your job search, yeah? All the best. And just remember, there will be one door that will be open for you. Okay? We, we, you have to come back. Uh. You have to come back, please. <laughs> You got so many words of appreciation here. Oh, why? Oh, gosh. Okay, bye, guys. Bye bye. bye. Thank bye. you.